Excuse me, it's great to be in our outdoor arena and riding these horses. You know, I had the boarder here at Silvertooth tell me the other day when she saddles up her horse, it's great to have the horses act perfectly in this environment. Yeah, they usually do at home, and then the minute you get them to a show or an event, sometimes they act like they've never left the property. I'm sure our viewers can relate to that. Yeah, that can get frustrating not only for the horses, but also for the riders itself. And that's what's great about Better Horses. We're going to bring trainers and equine professionals showing us how to solve those weaknesses when we go showing. And you know what, Ed? We just want to keep getting better and better with our horses. I agree. Hello, everyone. My name's Ed Adams. And I'm Susie Darushi. And welcome to Better Horses. In our first segment, we're going to saddle up and head to Weatherford, Oklahoma to visit with professional horse trainer Phil Haugen as he talks about fixing the front end. And then, Susie, we're heading to Equifest of Kansas, where Brett Weldon, team roper, bull rider, and now rodeo announcer, will give us a play-by-play -play action on the first ever, are you ready, draft horse feed team race. We are so excited to bring back Ashley Purden from EC Equine in Lewisburg, Kansas. Ashley plans to show us a new technique on how to ground tie a horse. And finally, we had a chance to ride with Paul Garrison, giving us training tips on mulemanship. So for all the mule owners out there, you'll want to see this segment. Paul's going to show us just how gentle and intelligent these creatures really are. So sit back and relax and get ready for another exciting program. And remember, it's the only horse show on your local broadcast television station. Also airing on RFD TV and the Cowboy Channel. We'll be right back. is not for horses. They deserve Stanley Premium Western Forage. There's no better place in the country to grow forage than Idaho, and Stanley is one of the country's largest producers. From pellets, cubes, and chopped forage in bags to compressed and three-tie bales, Stanley cultivates the premium forage types horse owners demand. Because your horse needs hay, but he deserves Stanley Premium Western Forage. When you're a barrel racer, there are so many things that can bother a horse. Just eliminating the back issues is a huge advantage. I feel like using a CSI saddle pad has given me an advantage over other girls because I know that my horse is feeling good, that saddle's not bothering him. If you're looking for a new saddle pad, invest in a CSI. It's worth the investment. Hey everybody, thanks for having us on Better Horses TV this week. Today's training tip, I'm going to talk about how to work with your horse when they start to become front endy, or what I call front end loaded, meaning when they start to go into a stop or a turn, that front end starts to get stiff, okay? When that happens, it's, uh, which I, I, it's one of the worst things to me that a horse one of the worst habits anyway that a horse can get into because what happens when a horse gets sticky on the front end gets front endy or front end loaded then all of a sudden that front end becomes the pivot point because it has the majority of that horse's weight on the front end okay and it's just like uh, well an example is barrel racing you know those horses start to anticipate that turn and when they start to go into that turn and they get front end loaded, and especially when it's on that inside leg, say, say we were turning to the left right here, okay? And we go into that turn and that horse gets sticky right here and starts locking its knees and getting front end loaded. The only thing that that back end can do then is to come to the inside or the outside because you've established this pivot foot, okay? So... So when your horse starts getting front endy or getting front end loaded, one of the exercises that I do, I mean all the time, is a lateral bending exercise where I just tip my horse's nose and I want to squeeze that horse forward, okay? And I want that front end to keep moving. Even there, like where Wit's wanting to pivot and kind of start a turnaround, I just want to keep both legs against him 
I want to tip that nose and I want that front end I want that front end to keep moving because if that front end doesn't keep moving when you go into a turn that horse is going to get front end loaded and it's it's almost like this you know it's almost like back when uh, not very many people ride bikes anymore but like I, when I grew up we all rode bikes around and you know if you if you put on the front brake on that bike all the pressure would go on that front tire and the back end would kind of lift up well it's the same thing that happens with a horse and when that horse gets front end loaded and gets front endy it kills your momentum that's one of the biggest momentum killers there is in any kind of performance event that front end has got to stay freed up and moving well, even when you go into a stop it's just like with wit here i'm going to bring him around and go into a little stop when i come up here and i go into my stop whoo, you know I want I want to feel that hind quarter slide up underneath him and if I feel him get sticky at all in that front end I'm gonna squeeze him forward and then just let him melt into his stop okay so like if like if I was coming into this coming back up here I'll come back up towards the camera say I went to stop my horse and you know I sat down and dropped my hands and when he stopped, you know, I felt him punch into that ground. I might just, I might just squeeze him forward, tip his nose, and ride him off to the left, or squeeze him forward, tip his nose, ride him off to the right. But the thing I want him to understand that is when I bring my legs into you, it means keep that front end moving, okay? Because any time in the speed events, any time you lose that forward motion it's costing us time and that's it doesn't matter if it's in the calf roping uh, the bulldogging the team roping the barrel racing any of those events anytime that horse gets front endy or sticky on its front end it's going to kill momentum and it's going to cost us time so everything i do every day with a horse is when when i when i ask for a maneuver I mean, just like I'm just going to tip this horse's nose and ask him to step around. I'm just tipping his nose. You know, any time while I'm doing this simple exercise, if, if, I, if I felt that front end get sticky, I'd squeeze him forward and get him out of it so that he understands we need to keep that front end freed up and moving because if that front end's not moving, that horse can't get balanced on its hindquarters, okay? Anytime that front end gets sticky, that back hollows out, head comes up, your horse gets stiff, and then you're then you're in the middle of a tug of war. Okay. And you know, I weigh 180 pounds, my horse weighs probably 1150, 1175. I'm probably not gonna win that tug of war. You know, most people aren't gonna win that tug of war. Okay. So keeping your horse freed up in that front end what you're really doing is helping them be in the position to where they can use their athleticism to complete a maneuver um, you know one thing real quick before we end you know it's just like this horse's front end if if that horse's front end doesn't keep moving he can't make that little maneuver right there okay where where he steps around and he's balanced on that inside hind leg that front end's got to be freed up and moving okay so i always think about that anything you're doing with your horse um, one of the biggest killers in the performance events is is a sticky front end or a horse that's front end loaded okay i hope that tip helps uh, thanks again for having us on better horses tv you can follow us on uh, philhaugenhorsemanship.com or Facebook and Instagram uh, at philhaugenhorsemanship. Have a great week of training and thanks again. Stay tuned. We'll be right back right after these messages.
Hi, I'm Donna. This is Ringo. We're with CSI Saddle Pads. I'd like to invite you to ride our new revolutionary flex flight saddle pad. We offer a 30 day money back ride it, get it dirty guarantee. And the best part of the pad is it's 100% American made with American parts by American hands. We really like them. They've contoured a horse's back, help your saddle feel real good, and they'll work on a little flatter withered horse or on a high withered horse, either one we can make them fit. And, and uh, the horse is really comfortable under them. For more information, go to CSIPads.com. The other day, I, when I got up, I grabbed a cup of coffee and my dog, and we went outside just to watch Mother Nature unfold to wake up herself. Well, all of a sudden, I heard something up in the sky. I didn't know what it was, and all of a sudden, I realized it was a helicopter. I couldn't see because of the clouds. I didn't know where he had come from, and I didn't know where he was going, but I knew that he was there. It kind of reminded me of what the Scripture says in the book of Psalms. It says, they called upon him, and he answered to them, and he spoke to them from the pillar of a cloud. Well, it's our prayer here today at Better Horses that you too can just take time. Just sit down with a cup of coffee. Talk to God. He's talking to you. It's just that sometimes we're not listening. Hey, this is Steve Stafford. I'm the pastor at Risen Ranch Cowboy Church outside of Carthage, Missouri. Very proud member of the Better Horses family. Hey guys, welcome to the 24th annual Equifest of Kansas. We just got done with the Team Draft Feed Team Challenge race, if you will. Two days of it yesterday. It was pretty quick. Today it got a little faster. We had 12 teams. That's about 2,400 pounds of horse flesh going through the arena tonight or today. A lot of draft horses. It's next. You better see these out in the field because they may be used on farms. The dog machines leave a lot. Baby's lines are next. Beautiful flies bills. We got one Belgium, one first year. they had to do is they had to come in the arena there's a, a swamper on the back there's someone driving a team with draft horses and I'm not talking medium sized draft horses I'm talking huge draft horses they run in on their sled they pick up six bells of hay down to a gate on the far side which consists of two barrels. The first one through the gate obviously is the one who is in the better position. They come around to three different feeding stations and then the swamper, the guy or the girl on the back, has to put two bells of hay out at each feeding station. Then move to the next one, two bells, and then move to the next one, two bells, and then the first team out the gate and that heat is the winner of the heat. What the total accumulative score is, it's all about time. The fastest time wins, just like the barrel racing or, or bulldogging or whatever else, it's the fastest time. The fastest time was a one minute, 14 second run that was done yesterday. We had a, a one minute, 14 today. They take the best time of each day. There's no aggregate in, in the team race. They just take the best time of the day. And that was a one minute, 14 second run. I was a little apprehensive. I thought, oh, this is just gonna be some filler or whatever, but it actually turned out to be one heck of a dead gum show, I guarantee it. Tony Garrett was a 120. White Poppin a 121. Henry was 155. Ed Beard 120. It was my first time to see it. We're going to have it again uh, next year. They had 12 teams this year. They told me next year there's possibly going to be 22 teams. So be looking forward to the 25th annual Equifest of Kansas. And on behalf of Better Horses, my name is Brett Weldon. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, Cowboys. Kerry Coon coming up next on Kerry Coon's Horsemanship. Here's a quick tip for you that can make things easier for your horse when you bridle them. A lot of times we get lazy, but if you'll take your head stall and loosen it, 
maybe a hole or two before you go to put it on. Like this mare right here has got a lot of hair up here in her mane and her forelock. And if I lengthen my headstall just a little bit, it gives me more room to get over her ears, get all that hair situated, and then I can tighten my headstall back where it needs to be once I get it on that horse and over their ears. Hi, I'm Ashley Purden with Equus Corrido Equine Center, and this is Better Horses TV. Today we're going to be giving you a tip on teaching your horse how to ground tie. So this will be Sedona's very first day of working on the ground tie. You can see she's a little bit out of air right now. I went ahead and lunged her because she was a little fresh. One of the worst mistakes you can make on the ground tie is trying to do it when they're fresh. If they're a little bit tired, they're much more likely to stay standing still. I like to start it in an arena as well. The grass can be super distracting and can give you a little bit of a um, false indication of how well they're doing with the ground tie because they may just be standing there to eat. So I'm going to move her around just a little bit more so you guys can see what I was doing a minute ago. So you could just do this at the end of your ride and you wouldn't necessarily have to lunge. But like I said, she's still pretty fresh today so I went ahead and lunged a little bit. I'm using a loping hackamore on her just because that's what I've been riding her in. Uh, typically I would do this in a halter. Um, you can do it with a bridle too, but just keep in mind if your horse isn't good about stepping on their reins and giving to that pressure, you could break your reins if your horse isn't used to that. Whoa. So I'm going to go ahead and ask her to stop. Tell her whoa. Whoa. I'm going to put my hand on her and walk behind her and walk off at an angle from her hip. She's less likely to follow me when I come off that direction. So now just wait for her to move. There she goes. Whoa. Whoa. And I'll back her up. I try to back up to about where they were when they left. Whoa. I'm going to tell her whoa again. And I'll walk off again from her hip. Whoa. So back her up again. And I'm going to back her in a circle just so I don't get too far away from you guys. Whoa. But typically I just back in a straight line. Whoa. See what she does, give her a chance. There we go, that was a little better that time. So as my horse gets better at this, I'll build more and more distance between myself and my horse. Right now she's showing me that this is still pretty hard for her. So I might just come up and gently back her again just because I'm not correcting her that time she stood there and see if I can walk off again from the other side. Whoa. And that time she followed me. I'll back her a little bit more aggressively. So teaching your horse to ground tie will build patience in your horse. It builds trust between the horse and the rider. And uh, it's just a good handy skill to have. A lot of times when I tack my horses up, I'll uh, saddle them while they're ground tied instead of having to cross tie them. Sometimes the barn gets busy and there's not a lot of tie up spaces available. So here, before she makes a mistake, I'm gonna walk back up to her and just hang out with her again. So that was pretty good for her first attempt at ground tying. And we'll see you guys next time. You're watching Better Horses, raising your horse experience. What do you get when you bring together one of the biggest names in veterinary medicine with one of the most caring and committed teams of horse health experts in the industry? You get a vaccine portfolio known for its quality and safety, a pharmaceutical line you can rely on to help manage pain and support performance. You get the products, programs, and people of Merck Animal Health. Your buddy Ron once said he could install your ceiling fan. He couldn't. And that one time, Ron said another chili dog was a good idea? Yeah, it wasn't. So when Ron said you'd never afford a John Deere tractor, you knew better. Now, Ron does too. The E-Series. Legendary John Deere quality 
unexpected low price. Stop by and see Heritage Tractor at one of its nine locations for your John Deere and Featherlight trailer needs. HeritageTractor.com S4 Quality Shavings knows, just like you, your animals do better after a great night's sleep. And after 23 years in the animal bedding business, we found one size doesn't fit all. And so we made it our mission to fill your needs. Whether they be small, medium, or large, flake, pine, cedar, or paper bedding, no matter your situation, we're here for you. So if you need a semi-load or just a few bales, go to S4Shavings.com. That's S, the number four, shavings.com. And then everybody will get a great night's sleep. Hello everyone, Paul Garrison with Garrison Mealmanship and Training. We find ourselves here in Blue and Gray Park with Kelly Sitter from Sitter Downs. We are conducting a Mealmanship Clinic here at Sitter Downs this weekend. We have about 14 students in the clinic. We're going over basics, obstacles. We're now out in Blue and Gray Park working on natural obstacles. Our objective is to get our mules in hand, in control, stepping on things that they normally wouldn't use their feet for. As a trail boss, I'm leading this. I always try to make sure that we've got some easy crossings, but yet this is a clinic, so we're trying to find a few places that might be a little more difficult than normal. Um, but I'm constantly making sure that everyone's keeping caught up and we're not leaving anybody behind or running into any trouble. So we rode so far about four miles past two hours and we've still got about another 40 minutes or so to go. The biggest difference between a mule and a horse is, obviously, the mule is about 50% donkey. So the donkey gives the mule a much more thinking type approach to any issue they are confronted with. The challenges we're encountering today primarily is springtime overfeeding and lushness of the grass. Here's another difference between the mule and the horse. The donkey gives the mule a much more efficient digestive system. They, they render much more of the nutrients out of their feed than the horse does because of where the donkey evolved on planet Earth. So, when, when spring rolls around and everything's lush and green and, and mules are coming off of being fed extra to get through the cold winter and so forth, they have an abundance of energy that is, that is a, a little tough to deal with. Out here on the trails, uh, kind of accidents you can get into are uh, creek crossings are always tricky especially after we've had so much rain here lately they're boggy and muddy so uh, naturally a uh, horse especially if they get separated they might jump a creek uh, these mules are pretty cool though they're kind of a little more picky about their feet and we haven't had that much trouble with crossing creeks but if they get in a bind they will hop them so we've worked on doubling back and crossing creeks and making sure we can travel through them without jumping. Thanks guys for tuning in and watching Better Horses today. My name is Paul Garrison. You can find me on Facebook at Garrison Mealmanship and Training. Thanks for riding with us. See you on the trail. Thank you for watching Better Horses! Yeah! Close
captioning has been brought to you by Lina Weaver and Flattail Ranch. It's time to go with United Mosquito and Fly Control's premier fly system for fly control in your barn. Providing relief for horses from the stress of fighting flies. and also makes a barn more pleasant for everyone in the barn. Easy, effective, and safe. With United Mosquito and Fly Control, we provide a full service. You as the barn owner don't have to do anything. We go everywhere and take care of everything with our friendly fast service. Call today at 913-558-3814 or email paul at unitedmosquito.com. Your buddy Ron once said he could install your ceiling fan. He couldn't. And that one time, Ron said another chili dog was a good idea? Yeah, it wasn't. So when Ron said you'd never afford a John Deere tractor, you knew better. Now, Ron does too. The E-Series. Legendary John Deere quality. Unexpected low price. Stop by and see Heritage Tractor at one of its nine locations for your John Deere and Featherlight trailer needs. HeritageTractor.com in a natural, free-roaming situation, horses graze nearly constantly throughout the day and night. When feeding horses in stables, it's ideal to try to mimic this feeding behavior. Horses in stabled conditions should be fed their hay so they can pick at it continuously between feedings. Visit our website at stanleyforage.com under Nutrition, then Nutritional Resources to help transition your horse from winter to spring in the coming weeks. Hey, thank you for watching Better Horses. And if you've missed any of our shows, check us out at betterhorses.com where you can see all our episodes. You can also follow us on Facebook or listen to any of our podcasts right from your mobile device. And don't forget our newspaper coming out five times a year. You're going to love it.